Jeremy as Cook here, and today I'll be showing off how I designed and built a machine to give out these little buttons. Now I, I ordered like 500 of these to give out at Maker Fairs, so obviously giving them out by hand would be too much work, so I instead spent countless hours designing and building a machine to do it for me. You can see kind of an initial sketch here, it looks, looks pretty weird, and I also had a design that used kind of a cam system to push them out, but this, uh, this gravity based design turned out to be the best thing. And, Instead of just making them plop down on somebody's hand, use a slide to actually push them out like this. You've got an escapement method on the top, and then on the bottom it's got a slide that pushes them out when you press the capacitive switch on the bottom. So the design started out, I designed in Fusion 360. I use this on a lot of my projects these days. And you can see there it's, it's a slide for up to five buttons, I guess. And then you've got accommodations for a servo on one side and the other. The curved slide took me just a little bit of time to figure out. You got to use a sweep command for that with the same sort of profile as the rest of the of the design. So that's the slide mechanism, and you can see it printing here. Ultra fast speed, thanks to opt octo lapse, of course. So once I put it in there, you can see it just gets kind of stuck toward the bottom. Well, I could have made it bigger, but easy solution was just to just to use my file, file and file and file it. After quite a bit of work, it did, it did drop down though nicely. You see it going down there, going down again. And I put it together with some cyanoacrylate glue. This held together really well. It was touched quite a bit and, and messed with quite a bit at the last Maker Fair I went to, but everything held together nicely. Now with that done, I decided to make a nice base out of it, out of MDF. You can see me designing it right here. Made all the colors somewhat somewhat like they turn out and since this would take forever on my 3d printer and mine's not big enough anyway i cut it out on my cnc router it's one of the pieces there finished it up with a file and then cut the other piece everything will be linked together with a standoff between the two that was 3d printed actually i think it was 3d printed for another project that maybe you'll see here soon so with that done i popped it out finished it off a little bit more and then stained it with some black stain Saw this on a Pocket 83 video. He, 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 um, I wouldn't have thought that MDF would take stain so well, but it really looks beautiful once you, once you get it finished. Really, some nice, nice technique. From there, it was time for some urethane on the top. And once that was done and dry, it was time to put it on the router again. I carved a uh, push and then arrows and then it says receive button and then there's a circle in the middle. So the idea is that the people that would come by if they wanted a button, they could just press the this circle and then it would give it out as it turned out it wasn't sensitive enough to always press always give something out so people were kind of confused sometimes but, but sometimes it worked quite nicely I had to touch up that little line there that i made and then i'm trying to make that red then a little bit of work with a paint pen later some sanding more paint pen and sanding vacuuming and yeah and after after quite a bit of work i got it to where it looked pretty good and it looked even better once I put some more urethane on it. it really looks nice there. it looks like a like a skating rink or something now one thing I should have done while it was still unassembled is actually tap these accommodations for the servos this is kind of a quite the uh, the struggle but you know PLA is pretty easy to work with so did get that done other thing I need to do was actually make some holes for 632 screws in here. I uh, tapped it after putting some hot, some um, CNA glue on there. Now the reason I'm only tapping it in one place here is that if you tap it in one place first, then line up your holes. This makes it a little bit easier to get a good, good hole position for the other three. So with everything drilled and marked, I did go ahead and put some more holes in it and it, it did line up correctly. So everything, everything bolted down nicely. And these button head screws, these are quarter inch button head screws, went in nicely on the on the countersunk holes that I put in there with the router. Just snapped in nicely and everything. Yeah, looks like it'll be a nice, nice display. And there's everything sliding through, so it's working exactly like it should. I put some plastic or uh, rubber bumpers on the bottom. These are nice to have around. I got some used from China for like a dollar for a, for a bunch of them so good to have around 
with that all done, the really important thing about this is how I'm actually going to hold all the buttons back. I thought I'd use a magnetic assembly here to create kind of an escapement where, where one button is let loose while the other four are held in place. I thought this would work pretty well with these neodymium magnets, you know, because they're very powerful. But as you'll see in just a second, this had some issues. So with one button, you drop it down, it holds it, press it, and it releases it. It's just like it should. That's kind of how it's supposed to work there. One goes back and then the other goes back afterwards once the bottom one is back in place. So, perfect there, looks good. Drop it, drop one, drop the other, holds them in place, drops one and then reloads the second one. Yeah, perfect, right? So drop two, drop three, drop four, up, oh, and then one drops down. That's not, not what I wanted. But it yeah, still seems to work okay. But then, let's say you'd put five of these on there. Well, the problem is all these magnets just, it seems like they magnetize each other and just start holding everything. That's obviously not going to work. So, we obviously need to go back to the drawing board on that, but in the meantime, I decided to get the capacitive sensor working correctly. In order to get it to pick up on somebody's finger, I put a cavity in the in the top top MDF plate. Used my CNC router for this in kind of a, kind of a semi-automatic mode where I was controlling it by hand after I'd marked marked where I was supposed to cut out. Cut out everything an eighth of an inch deep so it only had to penetrate through an eighth of an inch to see the capacitance of somebody's hand or whatever. Put some hot glue on that like much of my project. Seal it down and then put, put some hot glue on the Arduino that would control everything. Now this Arduino, it's only got to control two stepper motors or two servo motors and the input is just the capacitive sensor. There's not much going on here. Only other thing is you'll see a capacitor right there that I put on there to help help even out the current when it starts up the, the servos. It's probably not the right way to do it. I mean, you probably need to actually use a transistor, but it worked, worked out pretty well. Now back to the back to actual escapement. I made this with a physical, physical, I guess, blade to go in and out. You can see that there. That's the first revision. They made it a little bit smaller so it would fit in there nicely. In order to make it physically go in, I cut it out with a Dremel tool. Obviously, obviously printing that to begin with would have been better, but with some work with a Dremel tool, pliers and uh, or snippers and more Dremel tool work, it got to the point where it would go in and out, okay, and, and drop the drop the buttons when I needed it to. So it's all looking pretty good. Goes in there, three of them. Stages one up and then drops it when pressed. And yeah, drops them over and over. Worked really well. I, I was really happy. I got to test it out this weekend at the Palm Bay Mini Maker Fair. And I was happy with how it worked. Only thing was that capacitive sensor, sometimes it didn't pick up as well as I'd hoped. But other than that, I was quite happy. I've still got quite a few buttons left over. So if you see me at another Maker Fair, I'm sure I'll be probably giving them out. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want, uh, subscribe. I would be honored if you want to subscribe to me or even leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy S. Cook, signing off.